Now, let's try to put a, a smile on our face when we talk about politics, okay? Good luck. I know. So, a New York judge, I read this yesterday, is expected to issue a ruling on President Trump on the $370 million civil fraud case uh, by either now or mid-February, so within the next week or so. What are your thoughts on this case? Because some of the headlines I'm reading have me concerned, to say the least. Tell me why you're concerned. I think just the the fact that he could just get off. Um, now, just to, to bring people up to speed, this is the Letitia James lawsuit filed by New York Attorney General Letitia James sued Trump in 2020, claiming he falsely altered his net worth. I think, you know what I think? I'm trying to hedge my bets. It's like the Super Bowl, John, right? I'm going for my team to win, but I don't want to think it's going to happen because I might jinx it. I think that's the emotion that I'm feeling. Well, the other issue is Weisselberg, the accountant, is evidently flipping again. He's saying that he didn't tell the truth on some things. How that will affect what is determined, I cannot tell you. But I can tell you that uh, this is a case which will be decided. The American people will make a judgment. Uh, I'm less concerned about his personal net worth mm -hmm. than I am about January 6th and the result of Mr. Smith's investigation right. uh, in Washington. Uh, and of course, we are still dealing with uh, the fact that since last you and I spoke, uh, Donald Trump lost the whole battle over the question of whether he sexually assaulted yeah. a woman and was fined uh, a phenomenal amount of money, uh, which is, is stunning to me. So $83.3 million. You think he's not... really going to pay a dime of that, though, John? I don't know. I know he has to appeal, and I want to see how the appeal goes. But the point being that what disturbs me is these things are happening, and the American electorate, at least the electorate supporting Donald Trump, doesn't seem to care. Yeah. And I remarked this morning in my podcast, it's Groundhog Day. Mm -hmm. It's deja vu all over again, if I can uh, cite Yogi Berra. Uh, it seems that there is, when you talk about a Teflon political figure, it seems to be Donald Trump, at least with his supporters. Yeah. I mean, it. it I hope it's Groundhog Day with him losing the next presidential election to President Biden. Apparently, Biden has a slight lead over depends, Donald Trump? Depends what poll you see. But right. here we are. It's only February 2nd. Right. So we're so far out, we don't know what's going to happen. And I was pointing out to somebody, anything can happen between now and November. Uh, international affairs, the whole nine yards. And, uh, and so I think it's almost futile. But you'll note Nikki Haley is taking the gloves off. Yes, she she is, is blasting Donald Trump. Why is South Carolina so critical? For Nikki Haley, if she doesn't win in South Carolina or do very well in South Carolina, she's cooked. But the same thing applies with Joe Biden. He's going to win the South Carolina primary. There's no real opposition. But he has to hold the black vote. And the main thing that I would suggest to you is everybody's going after their own constituency. Donald Trump is going after his base. That's who he needs. He's got to have them hold firm. Uh, Joe Biden is going after black voters who put him over the top four years ago in South Carolina. And he is in Michigan. Why? Because there's a real division in Michigan. There's a large Arab American community in Michigan, mm. most of whom supported Joe Biden, who were very angry about his stand on Gaza. Right. And as a result, he has to beef up his position there. And at the same time, while the United Auto Workers this week endorsed Joe Biden, uh, what's happening now is Donald Trump's going after the Teamsters. Well, the Teamsters did endorse a Republican, Richard Nixon, back in 1972. So it's going to be interesting to see how all these constituencies sort themselves out. Oh, one other quick point. Mm. The employment rate in this country uh, was phenomenal today, exactly. adding more than double the number that they thought they would have. And uh, the question is, will economic good news have any impact? And I would point out to you, we are not in a recession. No, we are not. That the economy is doing very well. The problem is food prices. And food prices, frankly, it has a lot to do with the battle in Ukraine. It has a lot to do with our climate change, all of those issues. Uh, I don't know whether any politician could be held accountable, but the Republicans will try to hang that on Joe Biden. As I might add, the uh, if the shoe were on the other foot, you'd see the same thing happening. So there are many complex layers here uh, that we will explore uh, because South Carolina primary is just uh, three weeks away. Exactly. And uh, Jan and uh, March 5th, 
Super Tuesday is well, oh, just a month of, and a few days away, and everything may be decided by then, except for the variable of lawsuits and Donald Trump's own uh, exactly. craziness. Exactly. Now, Trump came out, I think it was last night, and he said something to the effect of the economy is doing so well because people think I'm going to win the next presidential election. Now, of course, he's trying to, to conflate himself. But how, in your opinion, John, is that ever true that, that the stock market would soar on the hope that somebody would win? No, I don't think so. And the stock market is so variable. Anything can happen right. uh, with the market. Uh so I, I think it's Donald Trump trying to create the illusion that if he is president, things will get better. But people will remember when he was president, things were not going so well. Yeah, so exactly. you've got it's always the the push and pull of politics. Nikki Haley uh, said, yes, uh, actually on Wednesday, that Texas and other states have the right to secede from the union if they decide they don't want to be part of America anymore. A presidential candidate. Uh, saying so much so that she believes in states' rights that she would say something like this. I don't know. It just seems anti-American to me, John. Why do you think she's coming out? And in the party of testimony? Lincoln. Thank you. Who refused to bow to secession. The fact that Nikki Haley would make such a statement uh, is is not only ludicrous and absurd, but if she were the Republican nominee, boy, would she have a problem. The whole point is the Republican Party is caught on the horns of a dilemma. They claim that they believe in states' rights. They are using states' rights to go against the Biden administration. But the simple fact is, federal law trumps state law. And that's the way it is. And, and that's the party of Lincoln. So it is a peculiar moment. But I understand Nikki Haley and the Republicans want to hold the South. Mm. They want to hold the so-called conservative voters. And they are going to have to wage a campaign of states' rights. That, by the way, goes to the heart of woman's right to choose. Right, uh, exactly. You, you cannot separate what the Supreme Court has done and what it may do in the future uh, from this campaign. I believe that no matter what the Supreme Court rules on the, on the uh, Trump cases, that in the end, the Supreme Court will be an issue in the presidential campaign. What kind of justices do we want? Not only on the Supreme Court, but on the lower courts. So that will be another dynamic in this campaign. And although the most recent poll shows, uh, and it, they're so close, it doesn't matter, shows a slight advantage for Trump, I just, I just find it inconceivable. Mm -hmm. There is another variable, and that is what if Trump is convicted on some of these charges? A lot of voters are saying if he's convicted, they won't vote for him. And well, that would a have criminal. a huge effect. And that's why I think Nikki Haley should stay in, John. I mean, you said she's toast if she doesn't at least do really well in South Carolina. But there's always this possibility, and I know we talked last week about, you know, kind of suspending your campaign. You could always jump back in, given right. what happens to Trump. But it seems to me, I just wouldn't even ever suspend my campaign. I would just keep going. I know it costs money, but if you don't want Biden, it blows my mind that there's still so many people that see Donald but Trump. But they're blowing Biden. their money. Look at Donald Trump. The, the results that we've heard is he has spent $50 million dollars of contributions from yep, voters exactly. on his legal expenses. And he calls himself a billionaire? I know. What in the world is he thinking? Well, I know what he's thinking. He's always been very tight. And who knows how much money he really has in terms of flexibility. But I think Nikki Haley will stay in as long as she can. But if you took a look at the latest poll out of South Carolina, and I don't know if it's true or not, we won't know till election day. Uh, mm -hmm. The simple reality is, that uh, she's losing by 30 points in her own home state. You lose by that kind of margin in yeah. your own home state, and I don't think you've got a chance of a snowball in hell of being the Republican nominee. But wait, wait, let's assume something happens to Donald Trump. Okay. Then all bets are off. Yeah. Exactly. And DeSantis, by the way, who has suspended his campaign, could still jump back in. All of the candidates who have suspended their campaigns could be a factor, and that's one of the things we have to consider. Uh, has anyone done am, that before, John? Has anybody suspended a campaign and then restarted it? No. And then, no. Okay. So it's actually never happened before. No, but remember in the old days, you didn't have to announce until you got to the convention. There were, there were possibility of winning delegates. There were favorite sons. The whole structure of the way in which we proceed today in American politics is different. That's why you couldn't have an Adlai Stevenson be nominated by the Democrats as he was in 52 or a Wendell Wilkie by the Republicans in 1940. There are not those kinds of variables. Mm. 
one of the interesting things about politics is in terms of nominating conventions is once those delegates are elected, they're locked in. Yeah. And the only example, I think I used it last week and I don't want to repeat myself. There's so much to say, but if a candidate vanishes from the scene, as happened with Bobby Kennedy in 1968, his pledge delegates after his assassination got together as a group and decided to vote for George McGovern. But there were not enough loose delegates to make a difference at the Democratic Convention of 1968, which is why Hubert Humphrey became the Democratic nominee for president. What are you, what issues do you think um, currently are going to hurt Biden the most? Um, obviously, the southern border. Obviously, obviously Gaza. Um, I mean, Mayorkas getting uh, possibly impeached, even though they, it just came out, I want to say earlier this week, Republican Congressman Ken Buck said he will not vote to impeach Mayorkas. Uh, they're going to use the border, John, as this as this key issue of Biden's ineptitude in, in running this country, let alone somebody was asking in the comments earlier, you know, the response to the killing of those soldiers in Jordan. Um, yeah, all of that is true. But I'll, there's yeah, only one ahead. issue that really hurts Joe Biden. His age. But Trump's there, not that much younger. I mean, come on. Come Please on. don't confuse people with the facts. And it's not like Trump speaks so eloquently, John. I mean, it's not like I the know. guy doesn't fumble as well, debanking and all sorts. I just, it's not, it's the same. I don't know. I don't know. I oh, get you it. mean it's it's Groundhog Day all over again? <laughs> very good. Uh, very, very, very good. But my, my point to you is, I think the greatest minus to Joe Biden is his age. Mm. I don't know there's a, if there's a really a way to overcome how old you are. Uh, and the fact that he does not have the vigor and vim that he had 10 years ago or 20 years ago. But the simple truth is the American people are going to make a choice about direction. Do they want to go with a Trump who is talking about being a dictator on the first day or who talks right. about poisoning the blood of America through immigration? I think Biden's issue is his age. And there was a poll that I saw yesterday taken by CNN, which says that's what concerns people the most. There is another question, which we've touched on, but I think we should, and that is who the vice presidential nominee is. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at the actuary tables and you take a look at somebody over the age of 75 or 80, uh, all of a sudden your life expectancy is, is vastly reduced, which means that who we vote for, uh, for president and vice president, that person may yet, that vice presidential candidate, could become president of the United States. And, you know, a lot of people said when, when Roosevelt replaced Henry Wallace with Harry Truman, the bosses at the Democratic Party, and in those days there were bosses, did not want to see Wallace as president. They wanted to find somebody reliable because they thought the odds were that Roosevelt wouldn't live through his fourth term. So is that a gamble people are willing to take? Is that something that we have to think about? And that does not seem to be on the radar of most people, but I'm going to tell you right now, it may be the most critical decision we make in the campaign of 2024. The vice presidential nominees will be as important as the presidential nominees. Uh, so I'm throwing that out to you, too. But you're right. I, I watched this morning. You know, I suffer from low blood pressure. <laughs> so I watched Fox this morning. Oh, I don't which know. Which may you reveal okay. my political business. But let me give you just one example. I, I couldn't believe it. Hmm. On Fox this morning, they were criticizing Joe Biden because he hasn't hit back militarily on the troops killed in Jordan. In Jordan. Yeah. He says he has a plan, but... Know, but you understand, the attack wasn't on whether or not there was a plan or not a plan. It was the inaction. Mm. And I think that's a losing issue for the Republicans. I think that in the end, it will hurt them. But unfortunately, and I hate to say this, the American people are so locked in in their positions between Trump and Biden that I don't know that there's a lot of swing to pick up one way or the other. So one of the things is, and I know we've got the Super Bowl coming up. Uh, who are you rooting for, by the way? No, oh, I know the Super, know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl, I watch you on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> the Super Bowl is coming up, and it's the same kind of, of speculation. You don't know till the game is over who is going to win. Yeah. You can speculate about strengths and weaknesses and, and whether their line will hold or what. You know, all of the things that, that you would do in a football game. But in the end, what matters is what happens on the field. And yeah. I'm going to suggest to you that in this presidential campaign, September, October are going to be critical months. And there are going to be a lot of mistakes made, a lot of issues raised, a lot of 
uh, things that uh, we can't even factor in at this moment. Mm. Uh, by the way, if you live in Southern California, have you taken a look at the piers? The piers in Southern California, they're being battered and we're mm -hmm. talking about multi-million dollar structural damage. And that's because of global warming. That's because of seas rising. That's because of uh, all the stuff that's going on. And that's not even mentioned as right. an issue in this campaign. So, and I don't know that even if it were raised as an issue, you could solve the problem. But remember, Donald Trump took us out of the Paris Accords and Joe Biden put us back into the Paris Accords. And maybe the Accords won't make a difference. Maybe it's too late. I don't know. Yeah. But that's another issue which is going to have to be raised. So you're absolutely right. These issues are critical. Uh, and if you want to get a real juxtaposition, <clears throat> all you have to do is listen to Fox versus MSNBC and CNN. <laughs> that's all you have to do. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's the reality. You know, it, it's interesting that you mentioned what issues voters are going to care about and what may swing. You know, it, it's, it does seem to be these social issues that just wrap people up in knots. Well, you know, if Joe Biden's president, then we're going to take away, uh, you know, women in sports. Or there was a headline in SF Gate, which I know, it, I, I understand that people do things for clicks and things like that. But San Francisco Giants owner donates $5,000 to help stop critical race theory in schools. It just seems to me like, well, one, $5,000 is $5,000. We're not talking about billions and millions of dollars. But at the same time, what are, we, what, is, what are we as a voter supposed to do about this? Are we supposed to read headlines like this and just be like, that's why I can't have a Joe Biden presidency or a Donald Trump presidency? How do we get back to just focusing on the things that actually matter? How do we start focusing on things like you just mentioned, the water lapping at our front doors and nobody seems to be doing anything about it? But you see, there's nothing to be done about it except talk about it. There's no real answer, but you talk about money. Michael Bloomberg, uh, the former mayor of New York, has just contributed $200,000 to Mayor Breed's re-election campaign. Mm. Daniel Lurie's mother, Mimi Haas, is contributing a million dollars to her son's campaign. Uh, Daniel Lurie's brother, Ari, just gave a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, all of a sudden, all this money is flowing in. Uh, and and you wonder, why aren't there campaign caps? Why aren't there limits? Can you mm -hmm. buy an election? Right. And what do you think you, about that between Lurie and Breed? What do I think about it? Yeah. Like, I what think you... right now Breed is the by far the favorite. Really? But, okay. Oh, but there is not, well, why? She has the Democratic Party establishment behind her. I, she yeah. has Willie Brown behind her. But she, she has a lot has of criticism. Yeah, there, sure there is. But you've got to have an alternative. Mm -hmm. And it has to be an alternative that can do something. So all I'm saying is, it's again, too early. This isn't until November. Right. But I raised it because of your question of money and how money is being spent. Look, the accusation is being made that the reason Donald Trump is slowing down on his rallies is because he spent so much money on legal fees, he doesn't have the money to continue doing what he's doing. And Joe Biden, by the way, is raising money prodigiously. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has not had to expend vast amounts of money, as Donald Trump has. So all of these issues play in. And when you think about the importance of money, and this is my opportunity to put in a plug for supporting the Nikki Maduro show and the Mark Thompson show and Kim McAllister, uh, that the world does run. Jess Unruh, the former Speaker of the California State Assembly, uh, said the mother's milk of politics, money, money. And it's the same thing in media. Uh, one of the things that really intrigues me is the impact of media and the fact that we have such a partisan media now. Uh, so all of these things factor in. And let me again emphasize, if you want to get both sides of the picture, even if you tell me you never watch CNN or MSNBC or Fox, you have to listen to all of them in order to understand where the priorities are. One of the things that concerns me is that about half of American voters get their news from Fox. Yeah. And Crazy. Fox is a biased source. But then again, so are CNN and MSNBC. You know where I get my news? I listen to the hourly news. It's five minutes on CBS, every hour on the hour. Uh, and in the old days, when we were on KGO, I listened to ABC News the same way. Because I want an objective, clear definition of what the big news stories are. But we are going to see the most partisan situation. One last point, I know we're running low on time, and that has to do with debates. You will note, we don't really have debates. We no, have we joint don't. appearances. But Donald Trump has so far declined to have any joint appearance. In the presidential campaign, 
of 2024. Will Joe Biden and Donald Trump stand on the same stage? No, Will there that. ever be that kind of debate? And I would remind people, since 1976, when Ford and Carter ran against each other, we have had these joint appearances in every presidential campaign. We did not have them in 64, 68, or 72. Uh, and the first time we really had them was in 1960 in the Nixon-Kennedy debates. But they're not debates, they're joint appearances. But I'm waiting to see whether or not Donald Trump will agree to those joint appearances. And let me ask you the question. Staging, lighting, makes all the difference in the world. And we'll talk about this, of course, as time goes on. Richard Nixon won the first debate against Kennedy on the radio, but he lost right, on yeah. television because of his appearance. What will the appearance of Joe Biden be like as we get closer uh, to those joint appearances? And how will Donald Trump stand up under the Klieg mm. lights? These are all issues that we can't predict. All we can do is to say they will all be factors, and uh, and I'm looking forward to that campaign, believe me. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they do debate. I'm not putting my money on that there will be a debate between Biden and Trump. I just don't think that there will be. I don't think either man... Why? I don't think either man actually wants to. I don't think so. I think that Biden, for Biden, I don't see the benefit for either of them. I really, really don't. If I was their political you know, advisor, I would say you'll either stumble, Trump will say something wrong, he'll be blasted, blasted about all of his legal problems, and Biden can't stutter. He can't stumble, and he will. He, do you he think, just will. Do you think the American people will accept the fact that there is not a joint appearance? Uh, I think that Trump will, I think if Trump offers to, Biden will step up, but I don't think that Trump wants to. And so I don't think that there will be one. And if, if Trump's not going to show up, then Biden's not going to debate himself. So no, well, then, I don't think so. Then it will make what the media does even more important. Yeah, exactly. And the emphasis on issues will be critical. Although, and I say this very respectfully, most people are really locked in oh, in yeah, terms absolutely. of what they believe and who they're going to vote for. The fascinating thing, if you've taken a look at the polls, over the last several months, there's hardly a bleep in mm. terms of the percentages. Everything remains very steady, pretty much a deadlock. So let me remind everybody, there's the other thing we have to look at, and that is that it's not a national vote that matters, it's a state-by-state -state vote. Exactly. And we made a mistake, and I say this regrettably, in 2016, because I trusted that states that had traditionally gone for the Democrats would do so again. Yep. They didn't by narrow margins. So one of the things you and I will be focusing on will be the state polls approaching the election in the swing states. Because remember, California and New York don't matter. People aren't going to spend money on California and New yeah, York. They're, they're going to spend money on Pennsylvania, on Michigan, on Ohio, on Wisconsin, on the states which are viewed as a toss-up. And in the end, we elect our president through the Electoral College and not the popular vote. And it sucks. It really, and I understand if you live in some of these, you know, less populated states, you like it, but uh, it's it's a really hard pill to continue to swallow, John, when uh, we end up with somebody in the White House that did not win the popular vote. Let me uh, remind you, Donald Trump has never won the popular vote, and the Republicans have not won a popular vote election uh, in years. Yeah. Uh, so these are all the questions that we are going to have to deal with as an electorate. And that's what makes uh, going around the political world with me every day or being with you as I am on Friday or with Mark Thompson on Wednesday uh, or on Face Palm America with Bale Rove Rockland on Monday. That's what makes this such a dynamic. Every morning I wake up, uh, I get up about uh, 530 Ugh. and I flip on the news and I listen to the latest news broadcast to see what is going to happen? What, what movement is there? What is something that we need to emphasize? And let me assure you, as we get closer to the election, there will be more and more of this. And as you rightly pointed out a few minutes ago, what these courts do on the Donald Trump legal cases will be absolutely critical in defining him. One other quick point, and that is the polls now indicate that many people who say they vote for would vote for Trump that at least 15% of those Trump voters, if he is convicted of any of these issues, will not vote for him. And that would give Joe Biden uh, a real victory.